Thank you, guys. Fox News Alert. It is shutdown day eight. President Obama will talk later this hour, and he will take questions. Welcome here. I'm Bill Hemmer. Good afternoon, everybody. How you doing? I'm doing well. Great to see you. I'm Allison Camerata. So we are learning today about plans by top Republicans to put together a negotiating team to work on all of this. Chief Congressional Correspondent Mike Emanuel is live for us on the Hill. Hi, Mike. Well, hi, Al. Yeah, the bottom line is the House is due to vote on separate measures today, one that would make sure essential government workers such as Capitol Hill police are paid on time and also to establish this so-called working group. It would be made up of 10 Republicans, 10 Democrats, half from the House, half from the Senate, appointed by their respective leadership. It would meet to discuss the debt ceiling and other fiscal matters. House Speaker John Boehner says it is time to talk. Refusing to negotiate uh, is, uh, is an untenable position. And frankly, by refusing uh, to negotiate, uh, Harry Reid and uh, the president are putting uh, our country on a pretty dangerous path. Listen, there's never been a president in our history that did not negotiate over the debt limit. Never. Not once. Today, Speaker Boehner and President Obama spoke by phone. Both sides say the president reiterated he won't negotiate on a government funding bill or debt limit increase. The White House says Mr. Obama offered to negotiate after the government is reopened and the debt limit is raised. As for the latest offer from House Republicans, a leading House Democrat who served on the original super committee doesn't like it. Is that what Republicans want? Another process that can birth another sequester that will lead to millions of Americans out of work? There is no reason why we just can't get our work done now. We don't need a super committee. We don't need a sequester to tell us how to vote. The votes exist right now to pass a clean budget bill. Fellow House Democrat Steny Hoyer called it pretense over substance, but also said that failure is not an option. Senate Democratic leader Chuck Schumer, one of the top Democrats in the Senate, called it another gimmick. Allison? Yeah, hard to know if they're making any progress with all this talk. Mike Emanuel, thank you. So we found thank out you. that more than half the country does not want the debt limit to be raised, period. That's what we found in our Fox News polling. And 62% of Americans say any debt ceiling hike needs to go along with some major spending cuts. 27% say it needs to be done regardless. So what is at stake here? The host of Money uh, with Melissa Francis on the Fox Business Network. Melissa, how are you? Good day to you. Thank you. So that poll shows where the majority of Americans are. They are not just behind raising the debt limit. No, absolutely. I mean, 62% say, look, you've got to get your financial house in order first. I mean, there are these two competing narratives. There's the one on the left that you hear from the president who says that, you know, we are not deadbeats. You can't go out there and not pay your bills. The other narrative that it seems like more Americans are relating to is this idea that when you max out your visa card, you don't call visa and say, it's your responsibility to raise my debt limit. I need more credit. You sit down with your family and you get your financial house in order. And that mm -hmm. second one seems to be getting more traction with Americans right now, now. China is weighing in on this. Yes. What in the world is Beijing saying, Melissa? Well, you know, the foreign minister says the clock is ticking. We expect America to get its house in order and, and to, you know, address this in a timely manner. Basically, they are our largest creditor. They hold $1.3 trillion in foreign debt right now. It's thought they have maybe three times that in dollar denominated assets. So it's very important to them that we don't see a major meltdown over I here. I see. Uh, Wall Street here at home. Uh, a lot of times Sometimes the markets can it can move opinion. What, what are you seeing? Well, so far so good. I mean, the markets are relatively steady. When I talk to investors, they are concerned. You know, they do say this is a lot more serious because if there is a downgrade of our debt, it triggers a lot of different things in the market. Now, if you look back to last time in 2011, S&P did downgrade our debt, and that did cause a lot of problems. The government, though immediately S&P says retaliate and they did go after S&P with a lawsuit based on what they did in the financial crisis. They feel like there was a causal relationship there that it was retribution and a lot of people think that the rating agencies Fitch, Moody's and S&P will be more reluctant to downgrade the debt this time around because of that unless we miss a payment. I right, mean that's right. the big okay. trigger. Now, and that, that is something we're watching but, but that's yeah. key now unless the government misses a payment. 
What yeah. is the likelihood of that happening or not now? Well, it depends on who you talk to, you know, and if you look at the numbers, we take in $234 billion every month, according to the CBO and revenue. We only need 18.6, a tiny fraction of that, in order to service the debt. Jack Lew, the Treasury Secretary, says it's not up to him to decide how to prioritize what we pay and what we don't. Other people, economists like Peter Morisi, say that's exactly your job to prioritize what we pay and what we don't. So the money is there to make a payment. I don't know. The rest may be up to politics. All It'll right. certainly be interesting to watch. Yeah, and you'll plenty to talk about later today at 5 o'clock. That's right. Fox Business Network. Check right it out. On. Melissa, thanks. Thank money you. with Melissa. She's all about money. That's I mean, right. just look at her for crying <laughs> out loud. She is so money. <laughs> <laughs> money. See you, Melissa. That's right. Yeah, yeah that's thanks. great. Thanks so much, Melissa. All right. Well, as you know, the president canceled his trip to Asia because of all of this. And now the vice president has canceled his trip to New Jersey. Vice President Biden was supposed to take the 200-mile trip to the Garden State on Friday to show support for U.S. Senate candidate Cory Booker. Booker is the mayor of Newark, and he is running for the seat of the late Senator Frank Lautenberg. That special election is next week.